الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفقه ونفسه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون All praise be to Allah and peace of Allah be on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last of the Prophets. The ayah, the verse of the Quran which I have just quoted, addresses Muslims, believers, Allah addresses them and says, Ittaqullah haqqa tuqati. Have fear of Allah as he deserved, deserves to be feared. Wala tamutunna illa wa antu muslimun. And your death should come only when it sees you and finds you as a Muslim, as a believer, as someone who has submitted himself to Allah. Now this taqwa, which is usually translated with the word fear, you must remember that it's not an ordinary type of fear. It's a type of fear, it's a kind of fear, which has love of Allah also in it or behind it which has respect of Allah and his commandments so the total of fear love and respect is taqwa and this taqwa the main function and a very important function of this taqwa is that it helps us to enact the commandments of Allah, to act upon the commandments of Allah and to avoid what he has forbidden for us. That is its main function and that is its main use. And it's so important in Islam so important in Quran and Sunnah that it has been emphasized again and again. Its importance has been emphasized again and again, both in the Quran and the Hadith. There are many verses, many traditions, many Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in this collection. I will quote just a few. First of all, Quran is a book of guidance, no doubt. But its guidance is useful for whom? Hudal bin Mustaqi. It benefits those who have taqwa, the Mustaqi. Those who fear Allah, fear Allah, respect Him, love Him. Then again, the Quran says, In Allah ma'al Mustaqi. Allah is with Mustaqi. His guidance and his support 
is for muttaqi for those who have taqwa again in allah yuhibbul muttaqi allah loves the muttaqi allah likes those who have taqwa in their hearts and they are guided by taqwa in all their actions <coughs> as for paradise the jannah most of the promises made in the quran about jannah or for jannah they are meant for muttaqi inna lil muttaqina mafaza success is only for muttaqi success in the hereafter success the real success the real success is for muttaqi only jannah uiddat lil muttaqi it has been made for muttaqi it has been prepared for muttaqi what else will be required to know the importance of taqwa and the and the place of muttaqi in the law similarly the hadith an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked man akramun nas who is most respectable among people and just as the quran says in akramakum taqwakum the most respectable among you and the most respectable near allah is the one who has taqwa who is muttaqi and who has taqwa <coughs> similarly the same the same answer was given by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam man akramun nas qala akramuhum atqahum the most respect respect respectable among people is the one or those people who have taqwa the muttaqin they are the most respectable then they sh- and they should given this respect by others similarly he was asked in a, in a, on another occasion one of the companions asked him soela an aksar ma yudkhilu an-nas al-jannah he was asked what will cause people to enter what will cause mostly mostly what will cause cause people to enter paradise he said taqwa allah wa husnul khulq the fear of allah and the taqwa of allah and good manners good manners among you good social manners these are the teachings and there are many others as i said but how the prophet himself sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions how they acted upon these teachings and how they realized the importance of taqwa and how they tried to have taqwa in all their actions and throughout their life there are many examples the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sometimes would find a date one date tamar on his bed and he will try to eat it or he would have intention to eat it but then something will come to come to his mind maybe this tamar this date is from sadaqa and sadaqa is not good for me is not meant for me and my family so he will throw the date aside and would not take it would not take it nobody is seeing stays is in night is the time of night nobody is watching but he has taqwa in his heart so he would not use this day similarly his beloved grandson the daughter of fatima radiyallahu anha the elder one hasan once came to the mosque he was a small child came to the mosque and there was a heap of dates in the mosque sadaqa zakat heap of mosques uh, of dates so he was just just a child he came there took one day and tried to and put put in his mouth 
Prabhat Sarasambha was, was sitting on, on, on one side. He, he came running. He came quickly. Took out the date from his mouth. And said, this is not halal for us. So even if you are a child, I will not allow you to take it. To eat it. This is taqwa. Then it is reported that many a times when he was leading the prayer, he said that he azizun ka aziz in mirja. People could hear a sound coming out of his chest. And what was that sound? He was keeping with the fear of Allah in the salah. And he was also, at the same time, he was trying to control that people, that people may not hear it. He was also trying to hide it. It's only for Allah, not for people. So, because of uh, that weeping and because of his, try, his, his try, trying to control it, there was a sound coming out of the chest. And uh, the, the companions compared it to, to the sound coming out of the pot which is put on fire for cooking something. So something like that, something like that, uh, so, a sound similar to that was coming from his, his chest because of taqwa, because of fear of Allah. And similarly about uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala also, uh, it's reported that uh, sometimes, and many a times, he used to weep because of taqwa, because of fear of Allah, that I'm standing before Allah, and uh, I'm uh, talking to him, saying something to him, and he's hearing it. So his voice, his similar voice of weeping, the uh, Abdullah bin Shaddad, one of his companions, uh, reports, that it used to come even to the end of the mosque. To the end of the mosque, it used to come. People standing at the end also could hear the voice, the, the, the sound of his weeping. Abu Bakr ta'ala, he was served, he was given uh, some food by his servant which was brought by the servant from outside. He started eating it. But suddenly the servant said that it has come from such and such source. And Abu Bakr thought that the source was not halal, the source was not good. So he left taking or eating that food. And not only that, whatever he had already eaten he tried to bring it out by vomiting, by putting his fingers inside and struggling to take it out. Someone present said, you, when you took a few morsels or a few drops, a few, few, few morsels of this, uh, this food, you did not know that it was halal. It was, you didn't know that it was, it was not good. You did it unknowingly, unwittingly. So why do you try to vomit and why do, why do you try to take it up? He said, because I have heard the Prophet saying, Kullu lahmin nabata bin Every particle of your body, every particle of the, of, the, uh, of the body which has been produced or which has been nourished by haram, it's fit for fire only. It's only fit for fire and nothing else. So that's why I know I took it unknowingly and Allah, Allah will for, uh, forgive me for that because I didn't know that it was not good for me. But still, I don't want that haram should stay in my body. So that is how the companions understood the importance of taqwa and how they tried to imbibe it, inculcate it in themselves, in their life, and in their actions. And then 
the Prophet وسلم, used to pray also that Allah may help him retain his taqwa and increase his taqwa. While in prostration in sajda, he will sometimes recite a dua. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man taqwaha. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, give me taqwa. I need taqwa. I am in need of taqwa. And I request you, I beseech you, to give me this quality of taqwa. Similarly, another prayer you would supplicate sometimes. Allahumma inni asal kal huda wal tuqa wal afaf wal gina. My Allah, oh Allah, I ask you for guidance and for taqwa. And you help me to pass a chaste life, a pure life, a good life. So taqwa is something which every Muslim should have and see. And taqwa is something for which every Muslim should, should try to have it and, to, and also make dua to Allah, to, to, to supplicate to Allah that this great quality of taqwa may be granted to him. And as I said in the beginning, it's a key to success, real success. Real success is not that we think that we get in this life, in this world. Real success is the success of the hereafter, success of the success of Akhirah, success of the success of pleasing Allah, getting his rizwan and getting his jannah, getting his paradise. So the key to that ultimate, real, great success is taqwa. Because as I said, it helps us to act upon what Allah has ordained, what he has commanded, and it helps us to refrain and stop from those things which have been forbidden to us. And there are many do's and don'ts in, 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 do's and don'ts in Islam, as you know. Some of our actions are before the people, before the people, they, they can see them. They, they, they can load them, they can see them, they can watch them. Some of other actions are secret from people, hidden from people. In our homes, in our private life, in many places, there are occasions when nobody is watching, nobody can see. But if we have taqwa, then even at those times, we will try to avoid all those things which have been forbidden and act upon those which have been ordained and which have been commanded by us. As I said, the, 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 example, the examples are many. Usman Razi Allah Ali. When in his presence someone, someone was uh, uh, being buried in a grave and he was present and he was sitting beside the, the grave. He would start weeping and start weeping and weeping, continue weeping. Then he was asked, what is the, the, what is the reason for your, the, the success of weeping? He would see, he would say, Al-Qabr Avvalo Mandiri Mimunadim Al-Akhir. This grave is not just a pit. It is the first step in, this, in, the, in our steps towards Akhirah, in our steps towards Qiyamah. And if we are successful in this first step, we can hope and we can expect from Allah that we will be successful, inshallah, in the following and in the coming steps also. So, he said, when I, when I 
realize and when I remember that uh, what can happen to a non-believer or to a bad person in grave and what can happen to him afterwards, I just cannot control <laughs> my tears. And those tears were only because of taqwa and because he feared Allah. And this is the way of the Prophet himself. This is the way of the companions. And we should learn a lesson from all this. And the lesson is that taqwa is the main consideration, or should be the main consideration of a Muslim. And he will try to have it in his life, day and night, day in and day out, he should have taqwa so that he is guided towards good actions and he refrains from bad actions. May Allah give us taqwa and help us to have it throughout our lives. And may he help us also, as he said, La Tawusunna Illa Wa Anta Muslimun, that we, when we meet death, we are Muslims. And what, who is a Muslim? I indicated shortly, briefly in the beginning, that a Muslim is someone who submits himself to Allah. Islam is submission. Islam is acceptance of Allah's will. Islam is acceptance of Allah's commandments. That if we are, if we are, if we, if we, if we are a believer, if we are a believer, then we should accept his commandments. Ma kana li mu'minin wa la mu'mina ila qadallahu rasooluhu amran an yakuna lahum al khiyarasu bin amri. It does not become a Muslim, a believing man or woman. It's not fit for a believing man and a man or woman. That Allah has decided one thing, that this should be done in this way. This action should be done in this way. And the believer, he has another choice. He starts looking to other choices that I can do also. I, 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 I can act, 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 act in this way and that way and that way. No. Whatever way has been ordained and decided, a Muslim woman or a man or woman, a believer, should follow it. So the meaning of La Tamutunna, the, the, the La Tamutunna illa wa Muslimun is that when we will have this attitude of submission always that whenever death comes, inshallah it will find us a Muslim. And if we forget that, God forbid, Allah forbid, if we forget, for, forget that, suddenly death comes, finds us a person who is not, who has not, who is not submitting himself to Allah, then it will not be good for us. So I pray that uh, Allah may give us taqwa and Allah may give us, Allah may take us, uh, take away from this world and give us death only when we are Muslim. And before closing, I would like to thank you all and particularly our respected Sheikh, as Sheikh Abdul Muni, for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and to meet you. Thank you very much. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد 
كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي العذاب النار اللهم أحسنا في بتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من فز الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا فإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسله ولا تخسنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخسر الدنيا سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين